We had a lovely wedding this weekend. I wanted to mention that. It did look like a lovely wedding. It did, yeah. Luke uh, from Rock, who's been here, covered, um, filled in a few times. Um, he got married to uh, Gretchen, and you know her on YouTube as Go Gretchen. She does body piercing stuff and beauty stuff, and she also streams on Twitch every day. She's adorable, and we love her. Um, they got married this weekend, and a bunch of us went there. Uh, Dom, Dominic, Dominic Noble, you know, here in Kaluna and and Pushing Up Roses was there, and uh, Crash Thompson was there, and um, Kate, the uh, movie chick, was there. Lots, lot, all these people I haven't seen in forever. It was nice. I missed everybody, but what like and, a big weird family reunion. Yeah, and it was a wonderful wedding. It was a lovely ceremony. We had a lot of fun. The DJ sucked, but that wasn't my fault. Otherwise, it was great. We had a lot of fun. There were s'mores. It was weird. Big fire. It was great. Yeah, I know. They had like food stations. Yeah, th there was a s'mores and hot chocolate station around a big fire outside and we got I, I didn't even i was so full at that point i'm like i don't i i i don't want to s'more but i want to play in the fire so i just got one of the sticks and started poking the fire because you know it was a fire i've never been too full for s'mores but anyway the one thing that stands out about the holy the whole weekend dominic got us um an airbnb which i've never experienced an airbnb before i've normally no, been in I hotels and there's there's just this weirdness about it because in a hotel, the people work there. They don't yeah. give a nine. Yeah, they're there to get out of their. They they have no stake in the place. They're there to get to the end of their shift, and that's it. They don't give nine what you're doing. That's not their house. Airbnb, it's their house, and the people actually yeah. live there. And they're they want to. They're concerned about what you're doing, even if they're not overtly. They're still. So it's, it's this weird vibe, but it, it was a lovely place. It was this carriage house over a garage and it was this huge, like out in the, out in the, in the country, there's this just big green, huge lawn. And I, was, I would say it's, it's at least an acre, just huge lawn and there's a dog running around lawn. There's, there's, there's trees on the back. Now, why this is important is I went to the bathroom, long flight, got there and I walk into the bathroom and about here at this level above the toilet is a three foot by three foot window looking out onto the field now if you sit down to use the bathroom this is not a concern really yes it is well okay yeah it's to some degree yes it is um it's also right in front of the, the sh where you get out of the shower too which is not, but if you are one of the people who stand up to use the restroom as you are looking out over this rolling green expanse. Now that sounds like it could, oh, that's nice. It's just, it's, you know, pastoral while you're, you're, you're dealing with the waterworks. It's, but at this point in time, there was a dude out there on one of those big green John Deere tractors, you know, the lawn, just the lawn mower. And the stars aligned. And I looked up and he and we made eye contact. He looks at me and I look at him. So I'm here I am engaging. <laughs> and I'm looking at this guy and he's looking at me. Now there are a couple of considerations here. If is this guy just hired? Does he not know the layout of the house? Because if so, he doesn't know what I'm doing. So right. this is a lot less. But if he actually lives there and he's one. He knows why what I why I'm standing at that window. And we're just like. Do they not I, have like a shade or curtains no, on that window? No shade, no curtains, nothing. I'm not kidding. That's just poor hosting. And I'm think I didn't know. I don't think either of us knew who had to break eye contact first. Because it was this weird. It was just locked on to each other. It was so nice and weird. I used to stay at my aunt's house when I was a kid a lot, and she had a giant window in the shower out onto her backyard. And like on the one hand, if you take very hot showers, it was kind of nice because like no steam. But it was a big ass window in the shower. Right. That looked out onto her backyard. Like and like where I currently live, I have a window in my shower, but it's frosted. Yeah, but yeah, if it's not, that's like verging on a fetish right there, really. Right. And even then, like if I shower at night, I wonder how much 
how how much the frosting is doing for me, you know? Uh, I always feel like somebody's watching. Oh, Rockwell. Anyway, so um, yeah. I do want to mention before we get into the nonsense that oh. November is actually Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Okay. I, um, you've been mentioning Project Purple a lot, and I love that. Um, so I just want to tell everybody there's no specific screening for pancreatic cancer, but if you have a primary care and something weird is up, ask some questions. Um, I made a TikTok with some of the symptoms if you want to check that out. Um, but be aware, look out for yourself. Early detection is key. Yep. And it's not an age thing either. So it's not, unfortunately. All right. So now it is time to get to the nonsense. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for the segment we like to call What the Fuck's Wrong. And of course, we have Halloween. Of course, we have. Every year, it's, I was surprised we had stuff during Halloween, but we have some immediately after. And, and we all know what happens after every single Halloween. It's one of two things. You can already guess it. It never, it never stops. And what's fascinating is it's never worked for anyone who's tried it. It's never been like, I'm going to, I'm actually going to make, going to make this work somehow. And they never do. Man who wore Hitler costume for Halloween, fired from job at Madison Children's Museum. What? Tell me he didn't wear it to work. No. Okay. A man who drew national attention and condemnation for wearing an Adolf Hitler costume on State Street was fired from his job at the Madison Children's Museum on Tuesday night. The organization determined that his continued employment would create an environment at odds with our values and unwelcoming to visitors and staff. Monday, a museum official said the man's costume was, quote, completely unacceptable. Prince countered everything the museum believes. The statement continues, we stand against anti-Semitism and all forms of bigotry and discrimination. Um, they did not say, you stupid fuck, which they probably should have. Um, police said the man has uh, cognitive disabilities. No. That they probably shouldn't have said, you stupid fuck. But no, 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 cognitive. No, 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 no. That's not an excuse, though. No, no. Cognitive, cognitive difficulties is, is covers a lot of things to deal with in life. Yeah. But you don't accidentally dress up like Hitler. No, that's that's not what happens. You have to get it. And, and, and this is so disabled as to need like a caregiver. That's the person who's supposed to tell you. Yeah, that that's not what happened here. Because because here 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 this is this is a very. He went all in. He cut his hair. He fucking cut his hair. Uh, that's that's yeah. He gave himself that. There you go. That that's not a good excuse. Uh, they they were trying. I think they were trying to find some way to explain how they could have possibly hired this man in the first place. And they were trying to softball it. Is the only thing. Yeah. So yeah, that that's um it never works. Two things that never work, blackface and Hitler. Mm -mm. Blackface and I I guess under the, the 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 umbrella of Hitler is also um uh the KKK and related things. Any of that shit. No, it does not it does not, it does not, it it's, it does not. It, I understand that you might be like, well, Hitler's scary. That's not the kind of scary we want on Halloween because yeah. Halloween is also supposed to be fun. Right. You want like fun scary, not like honestly traumatizing to lots of people scary. I just, every year someone <laughs> thinks of themselves, I'm going to be the one who pulls it off. I'm yeah. going to be the one who does it. I, I have the power. I believe in myself. And they never do. It's like, it's, it's, it's kind of like, 
I don't like telling people you shouldn't believe in yourself, but maybe you should believe in yourself a little less. It's kind of like, you remember the sword in the stone? It's kind of like the sword in the stone, but for really racist motherfuckers. And every year someone tries to be like, to pull out the, well, I want, I want to be the blackface king. That That's what I'm trying. Every, every year someone tries and no, no one's, no one's pulled it off yet. That's kind of what it is. Get reality the problem, breaker. Reality. The problem they're all going to run into is that that sword is imaginary. It's true. Reality breaker says, just dress up as Red Skull. You know what? You could probably, like, if you want to be slick, get under the radar like that. But still, maybe don't. Maybe don't. Marvel. It's been kind of remarkable how Marvel has tried to veer away from the Nazi thing with Red, be like, no, no, Red Skull was actually pissed with Hitler. He was going to fucking he's he killed like he was doing his own thing he wasn't hitler different directions with it because right around the time that they decided to make captain america a nazi Mm, for um they started saying well no 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 hydra aren't nazis they're like they don't even like the nazis because the nazis weren't hardcore enough at the same time though you had agent shield that literally had a character ask one of the main characters, like, but they were Nazis, right? And she was like, every fucking one of them, and don't you forget it. Probably not in those exact words, because it yeah. aired on ABC, but... All right. Still well, Nazis. Somehow, I'm trying to... F- th- this is... Obviously, it's very hard to be as bad as Hitler. But this next story... <sighs> what? I just uh, anticipation. <laughs> That's not a good lead in. Well, this is this is quite. This it's is hard to be as bad as Hitler, but. Oh my! I don't. I, we've got video. We've got fucking video. This I I don't even. I can't even. Let's let's switch over to it. So uh, here you are, Halloween evening, and someone had the uh, their door cam. And uh, they left out, and she just, yep, you, you saw it, yep. Oh, it doesn't even fit in her stupid little bucket. Grown-ass human being, let me get the uh, story back up, there it is, uh, it was super mean, woman takes entire buckets of Halloween candy. <laughs> From Tampa home. So of course it was of course it was Florida. Woman caught on video taking a home's entire candy supply for herself Halloween night while in costume. Uh popular YouTube streamer Andy Signor, uh host of Popcorn Planet, told uh WFLA he was out trick-or-treating with his family when he saw what happened on the doorbells app. Not happening live, and I was shocked. I expected some teens to be greedy, but I couldn't believe an adult woman would take it all. The video showed the woman dressed in what appeared to be a barmaid costume, empty both candy buckets into her own bucket. She dressed up, walked on my lawn, and seemed to do it with intent. It was super mean. Who needs that much candy? I, like, if you ran out at home, just run to the store. But also, every year somebody in my neighborhood does this and complains. Like every year, somebody doesn't want to deal with trick or treaters, so they just put out a bowl of candy, and then the next day, there's a ring video of some kid dumping the bowl in their bag, and I'm like, "What the fuck do you expect?" Okay, yeah, but I would expect a kid, thirteen or right. lower, not a grown ass adult, right? But I also like, if you're not going to be home, just put up a sign that says you're not home. Like, I have never been able to get behind just leaving an unattended bowl of candy because you can't fucking trust people. See, I, I would try to come up with and something. And if you do, and this happens, you don't get to be mad about it because you left out a big unattended bi- bag of candy. See, we've got a pet door that we don't use on the porch. And if I was in that position, I would come up with some sort of mechanism, maybe like cannibalize the, the, the automatic cat feeder and just have it like when the kids come out with a motion sensor and have it just shoot the candy out the pet door. That way they can't take it all at once. But, you know, it's entertaining. Just this just shoots candy out at the kids. And they get okay. a little exercise. They have to go and find the candy later. Okay. Or I you mean, could just put up a sign that says nobody's home. 
I have a little sign that says out of candy for when I run out of candy and I just hang it over my doorbell. Yeah, but that's just begging for an egg. You know? No, because like it says like out of candy, not Doesn't like matter. I'm an egg. Doesn't matter. It's like I have never had a problem with it. The, the but I also teenagers at Halloween are feral beasts. They, they 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 you cannot appeal to reason. I gotta be honest, it's super weird out here how polite all the kids are. <laughs> kids here are super fucking nice. Like I can't tell you how many people complimented my costume, my decorations. Like the kids out here are just like super nice children and teenagers. It's fucking weird. Yeah, but I I just I can't imagine an adult. Like what I know. A, you're on Halloween. I promise you if you find a bar somewhere, something's going yeah. down. Right. If you're wearing a skimpy outfit, don't, don't you can get better friendship than someone else's candy. Who steal the fuck? Like I want to be clear, I'm not defending this behavior by saying I don't like people putting out unattended candy. I think it's bullshit behavior, but it's you no know, people are trash. You gotta expect that shit, unfortunately. Okay, so the next one. Tara gives out full size. I think that gives her immunity against eggs. That's my hope. <laughs> I that I have enough, I have enough goodwill built up, you know? So years ago at this point, which is, it's going it, to, once you, it sinks in how long ago this happened on this show, we had a moment where someone in uh, air traffic noticed that an airplane had drawn a giant penis in the sky. And we all had a good chuckle over it. It's like, ah, uh, sky dick. Yeah. It's, I never, I, I, I never thought that this would end up being a military psychological tactic. The dick in balls dried in the sky by an Air Force plane was an accident. U.S. plane, quote, painted a penis in the sky near a Russian airbase. That was that. Look at that picture. That's not an accident. I'm, I'm gonna bring it up. I'm gonna bring. Where is it? Gotta, gotta bring up the. Gotta, gotta bring it up. Here, here it is. That is 150 percent not an accident. Yeah, that, that. Come on now. Straight line. Straight line. Straight line. Dick and ball. Straight line. Straight line. That. Yeah. Um. That's the best lie you could come up with. Uh. Come so, on now. Flying in the Mediterranean Sea on Wednesday, an Air Force refuel aircraft drew a dick in balls in the sky as it circled the airspace, airspace between Cyprus and Lebanon. Eagle-eyed observers noticed the plane's phallic trajectory on the flight tracking website Flight Radar 24. Um, the sky penis was drawn near Tardis, a Syrian city where Russia has a naval base. Um, Air Force officials, however, are claiming it wasn't done on purpose. Bullshit. Yeah, no, no. You you were actually this was actually a fucking this has now become a psyop yeah you, you have turned a dick drawing a dick on things into a psyop <laughs> i i'm really stuck on them trying to claim this was an accident given <laughs> look how fucking perfect it is it's so good it's like it's just it, it's so look at that let's let's get it hit computer enhance it hit, look at it it's so good it's so good quality like that doesn't happen accidentally no no, no it's 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 mickey with a long nose is what that it's is my time and i'm telling you the <laughs> quality like that is never an accident <laughs> That's the best story. Our military budget <laughs> is like two thirds of the budget. And that's the best story these fuckers could come up with. It, it was we it was accident. It just we didn't mean to draw <clears throat> it was accident. We we didn't <laughs> Bushy boy, 
What is it, all comrade? Need, There's a all dick! The explanation you need is, listen, you know, the minimum age for being in the military is 18. <laughs> it's just... The fuck were you like at 18? Yeah. <laughs> what are you about to say? You would be 18 to sign up. You just imagine dudes up there. He's got the aviators on. He's got the mask. He's put on the Kenny Loggins. Way to the dick zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, horse been drawing dicks. Anyway, um, so even it even looks like it's like about to penetrate that little canal there. It's 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 making plans. That is true. Okay. Next up, I I'm just. I'm one of those people who is like really anxious about plans, especially like this last weekend we were flying. I was like, okay, we have to go here, 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 here. I'm very particular. So I think if I was ever inclined to do crime, I would be very particular about the planning, right? After this show, you fucking better be. You better pull off Ocean's Eleven shit. So this, this, this makes me just irritated. You're willing to do crime but not get your logistics properly sorted. Thieves crash into each other after stealing from Springfield clothing store. Oh, two people face misdemeanor charges after stealing from a clothing store in Springfield, Missouri, but that's just where the story begins. According to the Springfield police department, the two people stole merchandise from Ross dress for less. Wait a second. You're stealing from dress for less. I if you're mean, going Steal expensive shit. <laughs> right? Because, look, you have to wait. If you're going to jail, make it count. Right. Um, in their haste to make a quick getaway, officers said the thieves crashed their cars into each other. That's why did you bring two cars? I guess so they could steal more stuff. Really? I No, I don't. You, no. Come on now. What were you if there's deep resell, quantity matters. Like we used to have people when I worked at Old Navy who would come in with a baby carriage with the cover and be like, oh, the baby's sleeping. I have him covered. And they would just load that shit up with clothes and walk out and resell it all. No baby. Yeah, but I, I don't think you could carry in your arms unless you like had like a fucking pallet. Care, like they probably clothes. loaded up a shopping cart and just ran for it. Yeah, but you're even then you could fit all the clothes in one car. Yeah. Why'd you bring two cars? <laughs> Collision happened here on West uh, Sunshine near the intersection. After they hit each other, the thieves left on foot and were quickly located by the officers. Why'd you bring two cars? Yeah. Like, obviously, one or both of you are very bad at driving. Only one of you should have been doing it. But neither of you should have been criming. Right. One, because you're wrong. Two, because you're not smart enough. Right. Get your logistics down. Come on. Because I, I don't know. I don't know if I've got, like, issues or whatnot. I probably do. But just... The, I, I, whenever I plan something out, I'm very, very fucking focused on. I'm like, this happens here, here. We need to be here by here. I'm going to get, get all this. And I love Sarah. And this is entirely on me. This is all me. Okay. She did nothing wrong. This is all, this is all my fucking twisted step by step brain. Okay. I get up the ticket counter and I've got, I've got my app up and I've got the thing ready and I'm like, ding and scan it and go. And Sarah, we're about to get on the plane. And Sarah gets up there and she's like, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. And it's like normal people don't like keep it. Normal people don't like, shoo, shoo, I did it. I am efficient. And she's like, hold on. And I'm, I'm sitting there like, okay, it's part, of, part of me, the rational part of me is like, it's fine. It's fine. But the back of my head is like, no, no, you're doing it wrong. You're taking too long. No, that, I told you, I have, this is how I am. So I get into this situation for like a crime or something. I would be like, that I, would, I would have this down to like the second. Make the effort, motherfucker. Two cars. Yeah. 
who brings two cars? Like, I, all right. All right well, I, you know, they had different places to be after their <laughs> shoplifting. I could think maybe, maybe if I'm given the benefit of the doubt, they'd like, we'll split up. They can't catch both of us. Hmm. But on the other hand, if you hit each other, they can't. And you're robbing the dress for less. So I'm not really sure you're really great at it's the fucking And I mean, listen, maybe there was something there you really did want. I just feel like if I'm going to risk jail, I'm going to make that shit work. Right. Like I've talked before about people at the Sephora who would steal the testers. And I'm like, you're stealing. Something that is free and used and probably full of hepatitis. Yeah. Just steal the product. So it's still stealing. like it's not less stealing no. if it's the test by the way. And I know that some people have thrown that at me as the logic, but that's not true. You're going to the same jail. So uh we're Florida again. And a flying story again. We have seen people try to get all manner of things through the TSA. Yeah. Um, in all manner of ways. I, I have never, I think we've never seen um, the, met, the, the, uh, the turducken method. TSA. I mean, we've seen an emotional support peacock before. So. Personal foul. TSA finds gun stuffed inside holiday bird. Let's see if I've got the pictures. That yeah, here it is. Um, bring the picture. Yeah, the, there, there's the. Bring this up here so everyone can see. It is. It is a a turkey. It's a baking hen. Sorry, with a loaded gun stuffed up its ass. Um. Ah, uh, quote the, the the TSA. They had they had they, they got jokes. They got jokes. There's a personal foul here. The plot chickens as we barrel our way closer to Thanksgiving. For us, it's a time to be thankful our officers aren't always working around the clock to keep you safe. Listen, TSA is the most thankless job. Let them have their fun. <laughs> They need this. When a TSA officer spots a handgun on the x-ray machine, the screening line comes to a halt. A local law enforcement is notified. Um, so Free stuff. You know that, right? What? They x-ray your stuff. They x-ray your stuff. The chicken is not x-ray proof. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just having my mind. There's Superman going, I can't see. It's inside of a chicken. I, 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 it's, I it's, it blocks my but thing. You think can't see through a chicken. <laughs> like, I understand you have to get to your NRA Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fucking chicken. What? What? All right. First of all, who brings a chicken through for fucking security? Like already, like how long is the flight? Because that's gonna smell. Already, you're at the point where they're gonna be like, "Hold up, I'm pretty sure right. that's like." They're gonna be like, "Sir, can you come over here, please?" This is a chicken. You're trying to bring a chicken. <sighs> they're, like, they're... if you were flying domestic, there's pretty much nowhere in America you can't buy a chicken. Right. So why are you? Why do you have to fly with the chicken? So already you're kind of, if your idea was to stay low key, yeah, you've already failed. What they're like, they'll never suspect. Well, yes, they will, because you're yeah. being weird. You chose the weirdest thing possible. Well, no, not the weirdest thing possible, but a pretty weird thing. A pretty weird, like I think maybe one of the weirdest things possible would have been like one of those like portable but sex doll vagina things. That would have been pretty weird to stuff a gun into. Yeah, yeah, but at least you can see why somebody might fly with that. Right, right. That's not a chicken. That's not a dead at bird. At least you could be like, well, I can see why it's in your carry-on, I guess. And I'm just, you're in the TSA line. 
and they have to stop the line. Everybody behind you is like, what's going on? This guy brought a fucking chicken with a gun in it. Chicken is packing heat. And you're going to miss your fucking flight because Opie up there has got a fucking gun inside a chicken. There needs to be, legally, there needs to be, for, for anyone who does this shit, there needs to be a, a separate little area set aside, little little square taped off on the ground. And if you try to do some shit like this, aside from getting arrested, they take you over to the little square, and then they invite everybody who may lo- miss their flight, or is going to miss their flight, to come over there, and they hand them fucking Nerf bats. And they just let them wail on your fucking ass. Because you fucking idiot. I really think we need to bring back shunning. We do. Well, no, I no, think Tara, Tara that's cancel way. culture. Cancel. Yeah, I think we could go a long way towards improving society if we had, like, the mean nun from Game of Thrones follow people around with a bell, yelling shame. 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 Yeah. No one wants that. Nick says, you gotta admit, it's a rare sentence to say, dudes, put a gun inside a chicken. Yeah, how many times do you have to say that in life? How many, how many times is that actually applicable? Uh, finally, this week, we're not talking about, uh, we're, is, I guess this is social media related now. We're not talking about Musk, who is uh, losing vast amounts of money as we speak. We're not talking about Zuckerberg, who is also losing vast amount of money as we speak. Is no, he? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the Facebook's cratering. The whole oh, meta bet, oh. the, the stock yeah. is plunging. They've lost billions. Just the virtual get, world where you don't get legs. Yeah. The, the, the lost billions going into a black hole. So let's. One person, I guess, was feeling ignored. And that is a, a human fuckwad named Palmer Lucky. You, you, you probably don't even know him. Um, he was the guy who invented the Oculus headset that Facebook bought. And uh, then he went on to be a, a right-wing nut job, fuckhead. And, uh, you know, Trump, motherfucker, shit. Uh, he, he got a cut, like, they gave him, like, a billion dollars for, like, the fucking... So I guess he was feeling a little underappreciated because no one has talked about him in forever because he hasn't been relevant. So he designed something for the metaverse. Uh-oh. Um, is it legs? No. Oculus Creator makes virtual he- reality headset that intentionally kills people. Nerd like, gear. For, can- no. What? Not like we'll kill someone's avatar. No, no. For real, kill you. Nerve gear can explode its wearer's brains. Name nerve gear. The system aims to closely tie people's virtual life to their real one by bringing them both to an end at the same time. If someone dies in virtual reality game or experience while wearing the headset, they will be killed in real life at the same time. It does so by detecting a specific shade of red that shows when a person dies, meaning the developers could easily integrate the system. Once that red shows, three explosive modules explode, instantly destroying the brain of the user. Mr. Lucky said the system is still unfinished. He aims to make it impossible to remove or destroy the headset. So people would be stuck inside virtual reality. So this is like a saw situation here. Why? And because of the limitation of the design, the danger it could fail and kill people at the wrong time, he has yet to try it out himself. So he said the technology. What do you mean fail and kill people? It sounds like that's the design. So the technology at the moment is, quote, just a piece of office art intended to be a thought provoking about game design. He also said it will seems to be the first time such a system is created and quote it won't be the last and the reason he did this was in part to commemorate an anime called sword art online which you've probably never heard of don't fucking worry about it but it's about a virtual reality world that if you die in the game you die in real life and that so it's the, the anime it so do, my my dude you know that meme that goes around the internet every now and then that's like a fake news article that's like, we finally did it. We built the torture necklace, neck net nexus from the sci-fi classic. Do not build the torture yeah. nexus. Yeah. 
Well, th this is, you can't look at this and go, oh, that's, this is entirely, look at me, I'm a billionaire too. You know, my problem is, once that technology exists, there's no putting it back in the box. Yeah, I mean, well, there's no uninventing it, well, and it will eventually get out. Well, someone was always going to do this. Yeah. But it could have been like Joe McFuckknuckle in Bumfuck, Idaho, who's a creepy motherfucker and like gets like does this shit on like fucking Facebook or YouTube or some shit. And, you know, the law gets involved. But no, no, it had to be one of our many billionaires. That's that's you know, who... the only social media inventor person that I really fucking respect is Tom from MySpace. Yeah, because he fucked off. That dude took that Yahoo money and disappeared into the night. What's the what's the last thing you have heard about Tom from MySpace? What does he look like now? I don't even where does he live? I don't even Fuck knows. Because he took the money and fucked off. Or someone in the comments is gonna go, I know exactly where we don't care. He's Nobody actually my cousin and um he's actually a jerk. Fine. Nobody fucking cares. Because he <laughs> fucked off. He, he 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 went on, took the money, and ran. Jerk on television every day. He's not building a personal space rocket, right? And he's not out there being like, I literally can't think of anything else to do with my billion to build myself a space rocket. What do you mean there are starving children? He's not doing that. So I don't give a fuck. In, in a world with Elon Musk, this is actually almost the sadder billionaire, because Elon Musk comes about his stupidity organically. This guy's really yeah. trying. He's this is this is so this worries me, man, because I'm already paranoid about technology and I've watched a lot of Black Mirror. And I watched both seasons at Dollhouse. And I just I I d I don't On the other hand, John Hamm though. Yeah. What I about mean, it? Black Mirror, but John Hamm. So I mean we live through that shit, but John Hamm. He's John Hamm. There's a lot of good-looking people on Black Mirror. Yeah, but he's John like, Hamm. He's awesome. He is in that one. <laughs> I don't want to live in it. I don't want to ride on a treadmill 12 hours a day to earn food. <sighs> so, Daniel Kaluuya might be there. I guess. I guess the first thing we've learned this week is is uh, it's it's or I guess what we've learned this week it's it, billionaires have just have decided it's trendy to be stupid. No, they've decided to just go full Bond villain, and that's so much worse. We've learned that <laughs> chickens are not x-ray proof. It Who knew, right? You didn't know that. There's your science fact for the week. There you go. Uh, Don't say we never taught you anything. We've learned if you're going to steal, maybe take the one car. Just, just yeah. saying it there. Um, we've learned that the United States Air Force is running a sky penis psyop. Your tax dollars at work, and just trying to deny it in the dumbest way possible. <laughs> there's gonna be there, there's gonna be like this drone swarm deployed over Moscow and everybody's going oh, and then it's just going to arrange itself into like a giant dick and start playing baby shark if that's how <laughs> world war 3 starts man <laughs> uh, we've learned that fucking grown ass <laughs> adults who should fucking know will steal all the goddamn candy from your goddamn house because some people just ain't got no class. Not a bit, not one, not shred, not a drop. No class. Like school like in summer. School in the summertime. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, yeah. we've learned no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, you're not going to be the one that makes a Hitler costume okay. Nope. No, it, it, you are not. You are not the Neo of racist costumes on Halloween. 
Nope. Have a little less faith in yourself. 